When we are drawing line structures, formal charges become absolutely crucial. It is completely and totally necessary that we always draw any formal charges onto a line structure if they are present in the molecule. Let me show you an example um, of three molecules of why it is so fundamentally important that we include formal charges in our line structures. The first molecule that we have here is a three carbon chain and all of the atoms in this molecule have a formal charge of zero. All of the carbon atoms have four bonds, which is what they want, and all of the hydrogen atoms have one bond, which is what they want. And if we wanted to represent this particular molecule using a line structure, we would just draw it like this, where we are representing the three carbon atoms in the molecule in those positions that I just highlighted, and hydrogen atoms, as you know, are not being shown. Let's take a look at the second molecule here. So in this molecule, you can see that the carbon in the center of the molecule has only one hydrogen and it has only three bonds, which means that this carbon atom is going to have a formal charge. Let's practice formal charge calculations and we'll calculate the formal charge on this carbon. Carbon normally has four valence electrons. This carbon has three bonds and it has no non-bonding electrons, no lone pairs. So this carbon atom has a formal charge of one or plus one. And remember, we will indicate that by drawing the plus in a circle somewhere near the carbon atom, wherever it fits. So there it is. If we wanted to draw the line structure of this molecule right here, and we just simply focused on the carbon atoms, the three carbon atoms in the molecule, one, two, three, we would draw a line structure that looks like this, which is identical to the first line structure that we drew. There is no way when we're drawing the line structure, there's no way for us to communicate that this carbon atom right here is actually missing a hydrogen. It only has one bond. There's no way for us to communicate that other than using formal charges. So it is essential when we draw this molecule in the line structure, it's essential that we draw the formal charge onto the molecule to make sure that nobody mistakes the actual number of hydrogen atoms that are in this molecule. Let's look at one more example. We can see once again, we have a carbon atom in the middle of the molecule that is missing one of its bonds. So let's calculate its formal charge. Valence of four minus three bonds minus the two electrons that are not in bonds, this carbon atom has a formal charge of minus one. And we would indicate that with a minus sign in a circle somewhere near that carbon atom. Once again, when we go to draw the line structure of this molecule, if we just focused on the carbon atoms and the carbon-carbon bonds, we would come up with the same line structure and we cannot do that because the molecule is missing hydrogen atoms. We would indicate the bonding pattern for this particular carbon. At a minimum, we would draw the negative formal charge on that carbon atom. It's also reasonable to draw the lone pair of electrons on that carbon as well. So, to wrap this up, when you are drawing a line structure for a molecule that has formal charges, you must always include those formal charges. Now, the other side to this 
information is that when you're looking at a line structure that has a formal charge on it, you need to know what exactly that means in terms of the number of hydrogen atoms that might be on that particular carbon. So what we want to do next is come up with a list of common bonding patterns for atoms with formal charges. And this is going to be really similar to uh, the list that we made a long time ago where we were looking at common bonding trends of atoms all of the atoms on this particular list, all of them were having a formal charge of zero. So here we were looking at like the ideal bonding patterns for these atoms. Now we are gonna be doing the same thing, but we're gonna be looking at bonding patterns when the formal charge is included. So we're going to organize this in a table and we're only going to do this for three atoms. We're going to do this for carbon, for nitrogen, and for oxygen. And we are going to look for each of these three atoms. We are going to look at the three most common formal charges that we might see for these atoms. Zero, a positive formal charge, or a negative formal charge. That's, we typically see one of those three things. And for each of those types of formal charges, we are going to look at how many bonds the atom has and how many lone pairs the atom has. So for example, when we are looking at a a carbon that has a formal charge of zero. I want to write the word zero so it doesn't just look like a circle. When we are looking at a carbon atom that has a formal charge of zero, we know that that carbon atom has a total of four bonds and no lone pairs. That is how carbon is the most happy. When we're looking at a carbon atom that has a positive formal charge, let's look at our example over here, a carbon atom with a positive formal charge, we are looking at a carbon atom that has three bonds and no lone pairs. So a positive formal charge on a carbon means three bonds, no lone pairs. And when we're looking at a carbon atom that has a negative formal charge, we are looking at a carbon atom that has three bonds and one lone pair. Now, as you do more practice problems with organic chemistry, pretty soon you're eventually just going to instantly know when you see a carbon atom that has a positive formal charge, you're just going to instantly know that it's missing one of its bonds. It'll become very second nature to you. But in the meantime, while you're working on it, you're definitely going to want to refer to this um, this table to help you navigate all these different formal charges. So next atom that we're going to do is oxygen because we see oxygens with formal charges pretty frequently. Oxygen, when it has no formal charge and it's in its ideal bonding situation, as you know, it has two bonds and it has two lone pairs. In order to put a positive formal charge on an oxygen, we need to give it three bonds and one lone pair. To have a negative formal charge on an oxygen, we need to have one bond and three lone pairs. And we'll draw a couple examples of, of that. And then last but not least on our table, we are going to look at zero, negative and positive formal charges for nitrogen. When nitrogen has no formal charge, it's ideal bonding environment, it has three bonds and one lone pair. To have a positive formal charge on nitrogen, we increase the number of bonds by one and decrease the number of lone pairs. 
And to put a negative formal charge on the nitrogen, we decrease the bonds. So now we have two bonds and increase the lone pair. So now we have two. And you may see that as a trend, and that is definitely a, a definite trend to follow. When we go from no formal charge to a negative formal charge, we decrease the number of bonds in the atom every single time. And we also increase the number of lone pairs on that atom as well. So let's look at some examples of oxygen and nitrogen with negative and positive formal charges. One example of an oxygen with a positive formal charge that you saw quite a bit in general chemistry is H3O+. There it is with three bonds and one lone pair. We are going to see a lot of oxygen with negative formal charges. Here is one example, one, bo one bond, three lone pairs. Nitrogen with a positive formal charge. One example that you may remember from general chemistry is ammonium, NH4+, four bonds, no lone pairs. A nitrogen with a negative formal charge would look like this guy, NH2 minus.